Good. So, our budget. <coughs> if you talk to the farmers, it's the biggest problems after weeds. A chronic problem which is increasing the biggest threat in the long term. On par of wind erosion as a serious problem. But it's our faunal emblem. It's totally protected and it's even an endangered species in New South Wales. So what that slide shows is uh, there is a human wildlife conflict that needs to be solved. <coughs> the reason for that is largely the warrants. And uh, if you have that construction in a paddock, yeah, it's not going to be nice. Um, there are damages to water tanks that's completely useless. Um, and um, I haven't heard about calcium deficiencies in wombats, but uh, that graveyard is now electrically fenced. So it has an impact on, uh, on, the, uh, on, on the farming community in particular. And it's clear that we need to understand uh, how are they tracking, what areas need to be conserved, what areas uh, do we need to give farmers, land, uh, landholders leeway with managing. So what we've done is uh, looked at the distribution of the southern heron nose wombat for uh, quite a while. So that's the, uh, the last report that uh, was available um, and shows the distribution of the southern heron nose wombat. And when we looked at the distribution of the far west a bit more carefully, which was now possible, is now possible with uh, using Google Earth imagery. So the quick bird imagery that Google Earth is using has 60 centimeter pixel resolution and that means we actually see individual warrants. So if you zoom in Google Earth into the wombat country, you can see the holes. So that's what they did is uh, the, uh, the gray dots are areas where we randomly placed um, four square meter blocks into Google Earth and uh, analyzed it. The dark circles are areas where we found wombats and digitized individual warrants to get a quantitative estimate of the uh, area of extent. So, when we first saw that, we thought, no, this can't be. Yeah? So, are we wrong? We called up the museum in Western Australia, in Perth. We called up uh, natural agencies, uh, natural resource management agencies in Western Australia. Ah, we don't have wombats. We thought, has this been a change in the distribution? Is this already a climate change response? Uh, Eventually, we called our three farmers, uh, and they said, ah, oh, no, we've had them all along. Uh, it's just that they didn't want to know, uh, <laughs> didn't want everybody else to know, so they wanted to manage them uh, themselves. So it's really very important that we understand the data and that we actually um, be, are critical about the data in our models. So um, we can detect spatial pattern. We haven't done it for the entire distribution. We're now working on the Gawler Ranges. That's pretty much the last missing link. But what we see from, uh, from the air is not the population. Uh, population. It's, the, um, it's the consequence of wombat activity. So we did a study in the, in the Murraylands, uh, set out a number of wildlife cameras, and we were able to actually ID our wombats and count the number of wombats using individual burrows. Um, so patches of the fur, and uh, yeah, so some of the wildlife photos showed um, the uh, different other users of uh, wombat uh, burrows. And I'll give a talk tomorrow about uh, research that we did on Wedge Island. We're finding 21 different species using uh, wombat burrows. So it's a huge, uh, huge impact that those animals have on, uh, on our, uh, that the burrowing has on our animal communities in the, uh, in the arid land. But that's another story. More about that tomorrow. Look at the uh, distribution per active borrow. What we're finding there is actually that the distribution changes with soil type. So what we see from the air needs to be <coughs> taken into consideration, or needs to be linked in with the, uh, with the soils uh, where they can borrow, with the, with the, number, with the, with the, uh, with the way they actually construct borrows. And, uh, Mike Swinburne um, did that as an honors project, which he's not going to talk about in the next talk. Um, but he actually uh, used ground penetrating radar to look at the uh, subsoil structures of the uh, uh, warrens and was able to um, reconstruct the underground warrens. So that's something just uh, looked beneath the soil with the, with the right technology. Finally, 
that uh, there is substantially uh, differences between the different soil types. Um, so, what we also did is try to uh, link all this information together and do some uh, broad scale population mapping. And this is an image, I don't know whether you can see it from the last rows, from Google Earth uh, to the left shows individual boroughs. At the right, if you zoom out, you can still see pattern of, uh, of activity and, and boron structures in the landscape. And because the area is so big, you cannot, um, or at least not with the resources that we have, uh, we actually probably win the global prize on uh, uh, dollars spent for research outcomes. But anyway. um, so, we digitized a few uh, borons to have some uh, ground data, some quantitative data that we could link with our observations of number of borons and the number of animals. Um, this is the outcome of uh, digitization that we did looking at the, at the Murray lands. So we're pretty confident with that. And in fact, uh, we, we identified some bombard borons in the south. Uh, where um, we weren't sure about, and, uh, and Sarah Lance actually followed that up because there was a report of a dead wombat on the road in an area where there were no wombats. So uh, she found the warrants that uh, identified the warrants. So we are actually spot on with our uh, image analysis, but it's still a largely manual process that we, uh, that we need to do. So here are some of the uh, quantitative numbers in the different zones that we identified from Google Earth. Uh, and this is a map that we uh, then produced from that. So there's a few steps involved. But if we take <coughs> the, uh, the numbers, um, we're actually finding that uh, a large proportion of wombats occur in a very small uh, area of the land. That's one thing. So the spatial distribution is very uh, heterogeneous at, uh, at all scales. We're also finding that probably the number of wombats is 10 times higher than what was previously estimated. And because we're actually able to, uh, to see much more of the, uh, of the habitat area that is uh, in, inhabited. So that's um, a word of caution about um, statistics and population estimates that is not spatially representative. We need to look at, uh, we need to understand the spatial factors that uh, uh, cause distribution pattern and actually sample accordingly. Um, the population uh, or the, the 10 times higher population needs to be also considered in light of the dynamic data that uh, David Taggart collected at uh, Kurula over the last 40 years that shows a substantial decline uh, from when they first started to do uh, spotlighting surveys and do the, uh, the groundwork up in the lands to, uh, to now. So, what, what is happening? There is um, uh, there's a temporal decline that we do not know about. We know spatial pattern. We actually uh, have understood the, um, or we, we have some evidence of where they are in space. And so we started to do some, some crude uh, climate modeling. Now that's not the final data. Uh, that does not include the Gaula Rangers that we're currently working on. But this is kind of what we're, we're hoping to do. Um, probably finish that, do some, some of this work uh, this year and uh, completing that. This shows the distribution of the southern areas of Wombat. So the area, uh, this is just a, just a crude estimate of the number of pixels in our uh, environmental data that contain bombards or cont do not contain. Yeah, so that's at the right is uh, the number of uh, square kilometers of that particular habit habitat type, just looking at mean annual maximum and mean annual rainfall in Australia. And the red circles, the size represents the number of areas that actually contain bombards, so where uh, the distribution data show the bombards are present. Now that's actually showing a very narrow distribution. Um, first of all, it shows that um, here's our, our desert area, so maximum uh, uh, mean annual temperature and uh, rainfall. Uh, wombats are really cut off at about 25 degrees, and that's a very sharp, uh, sharp temperature threshold. So I think there is there's just 
above that there's not enough uh, um, habitat, not, not, enough, uh, not enough vegetation, not enough food resources, so that's probably limiting wombats in that area. They can go to substantially higher rainfall amounts uh, and lower temperatures, but what happens with climate change? Yeah, so if that's the current distribution, just look at that, uh, that envelope, uh, 2 degrees, 4 degrees. At 4 degrees change in Australia, we simply do not, we lose all the area that uh, the current distribution of the southern herring north is on, or at least most of it. Now that's a scary thought. Yeah, so what do we do? Yeah, I don't know, I don't have an answer about that. Um, but um, probably uh, can make a few assumptions right now. Um, uh, the first uh, conclusion probably assumes a constant rate of prime minister change. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but what we do not know is how they're tracking, tracking in space and time. The farmers are reporting, uh, wombats are in the Murraylands already on land that they previously didn't inherit. Yeah. So maybe there is an expansion. But those are not the parks, those are not the areas where uh, the landholders have adapted to living with wombats. So I think, I think what we need to do now is already uh, look at where they're going to be in the next uh, 100 years and actually uh, look at our reserve plan accordingly. And so that's only for the wombat. But, uh, but it's, the wombat is an excellent model species because, uh, because we can get presences. We can get millions of presences and absences. Yeah, so it's the only mammal species where we get that kind of data. And it allows us to test some of the models. So I think I think there's a good uh, good reason, at a global scale, to actually use uh, our southern heritage wombat for some of that modeling. Second part is that um, wombats are uh, ecosystem engineers. So here we have a species that actually uh, is surviving cats and foxes, and uh, does something to the environment that may be crucial for, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the biodiversity and Australian fauna in general. Um, okay, thank you very much. Uh, Bertram has laudably kept excellent time, so we do have time for a couple of questions. Yeah. With the satellite imagery, what's the ability to differentiate rabbit burrows and worms from combat burrows and worms? You see the holes, yeah. So there's there's yeah. there's uh, there's not much of a uh, false classification of rabbits if you get imagery that has some shadows, yeah. So if uh, if Warren structures, if there's no shadow, the sun is in the zenith, and you just see images uh, uh, that don't have any shadow, it'll be difficult. Um, there is, however. Uh, rabbit warrens don't have pathways between uh, between the uh, between the warrens. Wombats do. So if you're a little bit trained, um, I don't think the error that you're making is too big. Yeah. The I was up at Bonsville recently, which is just east of Cullen, and uh, the landholder up there was showing the areas where uh, heron heronos have moved in in the last decade. And another landholder who there was talking about wombats being actually substantially further north than that in, co in country that they've not been occupied. But also they've moved north of the railway wall line uh, over uh, north of the Gordon Range. Is that sort of something which uh, you've you know, been tracking for longer? Is that happening elsewhere that the range is expanding in some areas and potentially it's tracking in others? It's, um, yeah, the numbers are reducing in the Maryland, so in the core area of the Bombay distribution in South Australia, in the marginal areas, into the mountain lofty ranges, farmers are reporting about an increase in Bombay numbers. Uh, they're worried. Uh, Bombay numbers are going into sandy grounds, into uh, flooding uh, risk areas, so it, I'm just making a wild guess, but maybe a 50-year flood will wipe them out. Yeah, so uh, it's not, not a sustainable location that they're moving into. And in those areas, uh, they're causing havoc, they're causing erosion problems. They, are, uh, they, they shouldn't be there. And I probably uh, wouldn't mind seeing uh, more destruction or collection permits of those farmers in those areas. But right now, we do not know where they will go and, uh, and where they 
where there might be a pressure, an unsustainable 